Hello my dear friends, you are in the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 16th of July of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. But before we start discussion the situation on the ground, let's discuss the most, I believe, the most important updates that took place during this week. And the most of these updates are connected with Ukraine because they're about Ukraine, but they're not about the territory of Ukraine and the situation on the ground. And uh, uh, for this purposes, we're going to start these updates with the 106 Air Assault Division, Russian 106 Air Assault Division. And according to information, we got that the, ha the commander of that uh, division was dismissed and he lost his position. And this is a very interesting piece of information. For now, the destiny of this general is unknown. Most of the Russian pro-Kremlin uh, channels, Telegram channels, provided a lot of information about him. Some sources were saying that the Russians needed to start another strike like Wagner's made uh, in June and something like this. But uh, what is so important and so um, in this uh, piece of news, I'm telling you. Uh, Today, a few hours later, we got another update uh, from the uh, Russian sources, and I call this update the clearing process in Russian army. And basically, this is the list and details of dismissed Russian general just for one month. And the first general that was dismissed, and it was the first general in this uh, big uh, series of dismissals, was Surovikin. We remember that general, we know that the entire defense line in Zaporozhye has the name, the line of Surovikin. Uh, he used to be the head of special military operation in late autumn uh, of 2022. He was the one who uh, evacuated and who made the process of evacuation of Russian forces from his stone bridgehead. He was the general when the Russians started bombing and shelling Ukrainian energy facilities. So he was the first and for now we still don't know uh, anything about this general and so on. After that we had, uh, we had a lot of updates from Zaporozhye area from this region if you remember first the deputy commander of 58th army was uh, killed as a result of storm shadow missile attack later the head of 58th army Popov was dismissed as well furthermore according to uh, so basically uh, the like two commanders of 58th army were dismissed uh, for some reason one of them was killed another one was dismissed also we have update that the commander of 19th 90 90s tank division was dismissed also we have uh, that commander of 27th brigade was dismissed also we know that the commander of uh, 7th uh, airborne storming division was also dismissed so a lot of generals during the previous week were dismissed and you might say that the russians are doing some clearing operation after wagner's provocation and so on there are a lot of options there are a lot of opinions and so on and i believe that you have already read a lot of information about that but i'll give you my own opinion my own opinion about that and my opinion is that something very interesting the russians are trying to implement and they're trying to hide as much as deep as possible a very important piece of information regarding all this situation if you remember two weeks before or maybe three weeks before uh, there was a situation with Kahovka Dam and a few weeks before the Ukrainians launched their greatest offensive operation in the Zaporozhye area at least two important persons are uh, dismissed I'm talking about Valery Zaluzhny if you remember we got updates that he was attacked by the Russian missile somewhere in Pavlograd and he was was very wounded and he uh, was healed in Germany the same situation we got about Kirill Budanov the head of special forces of Ukraine he was wounded as a result of a dagger attack in Kiev and he also was healed in Germany but current later we understood that although all those pieces of information were fake and it was just a normal procedure before the greatest offensive operation the Ukrainians took a decision to hide generals from the media field and they appeared later when the Ukrainians understood that their attempts to to penetrate Russian's defense belt were completely failed and repelled and basically right now I see the same situation from the Russian side Currently, all those generals that were dismissed, those were the most experienced, the most well-known generals in Russian army. For example, when talking about the commander and deputy commander of 58th army, they managed to repel the Ukrainian counter-offensive operation Zaporozhye, we can say without even losing a square meter. Uh, 
valuable square meter on this area and the Ukrainians lost everything they were supplied by the Western countries almost everything of course they still have a lot of tanks and so on but it's nothing in comparison with the numbers they had before that attack the head of 106 division is located on the northern flank of Bakhmut and this is let's say this is not just a general like from university or general from Moscow. This is the combat general who had who have experience to repel Ukrainian attacks on the flank of Bakhmut. He's very well known general, very well experienced, and the Russians dismiss them. I'm giving you my opinion that the Russians are trying to create another army and to open the new front line. And as I understand, the head of the new Russian operation will be the head of the ex, um, the ex commander of special military operations, Surovikin. He is going to have a lot of deputies and all of these generals, combat generals, who uh, pr who shown themselves from the very positive side during the special military operation, will be uh, with him, and they will be in charge of newly created army. But you'll tell me how the Russians can create new army. What is the new create army? Where is this created army, and so on? I'll give you another few pieces of information that we got today, and that also are puzzle of the same situation. If you remember, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, Shoigu, uh, lots of uh, times during this week, uh, during this. Uh, uh, this uh, summer and spring reported about the contract system in Russian Federation, about the number of forces that have signed the contracts and so on. And if you remember, the last time he gave us some numbers, he reported that around 120,000 Russian soldiers have signed contracts with the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. So this is exactly new army that the Russians have already created. And of course, these contracts were signed, uh, have been signing since the beginning of this year year so there is some normal process training process up to two three months and after that these forces are ready to be redeployed into attack so we know the generals we know the commanders of this army we know uh, the number of this army but the question is that Currently, in the modern war, it's very difficult to hide forces, to hide army. It's impossible to hide one, 140 soldiers and 20 soldiers along the combat line and not being seen by the Western satellite and intelligence and so on. It's very difficult to do this. But the Russians have also found the solution how to reduce the possibilities of Western countries to recognize and to spot the newly created army. And currently I'm talking about spring call for military service. The Russians uh, today reported that they have completed the normal Russian pr procedure of spring call for military service and they managed to accumulate, collect and uh, to call for military spring service around 147,000 soldiers. Imagine yourself. So they have and we know that the Russians are not using these forces. These are very young guys from 18 till from a from 18 to 20 years, and of course they are not involved in the combat line. But this is a best procedure to hide your normal army. Of course, now the Western sources using the satellites will see the redeployment of big number of Russian forces along the let's say the border with Ukraine. And the legend and the purpose is to show the Western countries the redeployment of this army, but basically as i understand the russians will try to redeploy their forces of a newly created army and with these new generals furthermore today we got another video confirmation how the russians were redeploying the wagners in the direction of belarus of course it's very difficult to hide wagner so as i understand they took a decision to leave everything as is and furthermore this is a very good legend because wagner is like magnet magnet they're magnetize all attention to them and basically what the russians are doing and this video is almost geolocated this event took place somewhere in Voronezh area when the russians were redeploying wagners and basically the wagners are moving from Voronezh from the area of possible russian attack in the direction of Belarus. and of course everything currently are paying attention to them and paying attention to this redeployment process. Meanwhile, the Russians have completed the uh, spring call for military service and they have already, let's uh, read in quotes, dismissed the number of very powerful and experienced
experienced generals. If you ask my opinion, I believe that the Russians will start somewhere on the north, north, uh, northern and northeastern part of Ukraine, somewhere from Chernigov to Kharkiv. They will launch and they will try to open another front line. The experience the, uh, that the Russians managed to get from Zaporozhye area told them that it's highly unlikely they can penetrate the Ukrainians' defense belt as well as the Ukrainians couldn't do this, and they will just go to the minefields and the Russians will repeat the Ukrainian story. So that's why I understand that the uh, the only normal idea that the Russians can have is to open the second front line, the area where there are less fortifications, less minefields, and the area where the Ukrainians less expect the Ukrainians, the Russians will start that attack. Probably this could be Kharkiv area, Sumer region, or Chernigov area. Furthermore, we see some kind of increase of intensifying actions in the vicinity of Kharkiv area. For example, uh, the Russians published another video how they were bombing and shelling and destroying the Ukrainian fuel depot in the vicinity of Avchansk. Uh, this is the second time when the Ukrainians have uh, deployed their fuel depot in the same area and the Russians destroyed the same fuel depot the second time in a row. Furthermore, the Russians published another video of destroying Ukraine positions along the combo, uh, along the um, like governed border uh, in the vicinity of a settlement on the north of Kharkiv. Furthermore, today, for example, uh, during the day, the Russians made massive missile attack against Kharkiv itself using missiles and so on and all types of weapons they have. And uh, first there was just updates that there was a missile attack and later we got the video of explosion inside of Kharkiv. As you can see, the explosion is very heavy. Probably the Russians managed to got some ammo depot or some accumulation of Ukrainian forces. Furthermore, the second day in a row, the Russian sources continue publishing updates that the Russians are too active, are too intensified in the vicinity of Kupensk area. The Russians, according and this information is confirmed not just by the Russian sources. This information was a piece of information was confirmed by the Minister of Defense of Ukraine. Uh, the Ukrainian sources are saying that the Russians are attacking in the vicinity of Liman, Pervy, Sinkovka, Masutovka. This is the settlement Sinkovka, Liman, Pervy, Masutovka. It's very difficult to understand what exactly did the Russians manage to achieve during that attack that they took that took place today yesterday and the day before yesterday the only thing that we know that that the russians managed to cross some railroad ways and there is a railroad way this one and to attack and start operation and capturing some strongholds on the ukrainian side of the railroad ways very difficult to understand very difficult to geolocate but for now we are using this piece of news for understanding the entire picture on the kupensk front line on the Kharkiv front line and possible uh, uh, possible developments uh, in the of situation in this area to uh, for in direction of opening another front line somewhere in this area Furthermore, the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of fierce fightings on the Kupens front line, the Ukrainians lost 50 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles and 1 artillery system. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing, and probably the last evidence about the creation of new army. When talking about the generals and their positions, I will tell you that uh, currently we don't know where is the Sergei Surovikin, he is the ex-head of special military operation, we don't know where is the head of uh, 58th army, the head of 58th army, so it's like the general with experience to control army. We don't know where is the commander of tank division, so we have an officer who is experienced in tanks and tank armies. We don't know where is the commander of uh, airborne division, and we don't know where is the commander of storm division, so as you can see, uh, we see the disappearance of generals of different types of um, of, uh, of forces. So we see that d that the, those generals have been disappeared that can create and that can uh, be in charge of a real army. So it's very interesting piece of news, and we need to follow this. And my projection, in my understanding, that the Russians are planning to implement a very, very interesting and special secret operation with the opening of the second front line. Uh, the final updates uh, on the ground on this, uh, but not on the ground, and then we will move to the situation on the ground. Today, the Russians also published the video of uh, new Lancet production, a significant video, as you can see, that thousands of Lancet in one building in, at one place. Uh, the Russians currently are able to produce thousands of Lancet per month uh, and this significant number, the Ukrainians uh, can produce 10 times less 
uh, and we understand the so the results of course the russians can bring 10 times more lancet uh, is a very powerful weapon the russians can use lancet and can fly deep inside the territory of ukraine and furthermore today the russians have created not just the real production of lancet uh, thousands of pieces per month currently they have upgraded this system uh, the new version of lancet has the title of product 53 it's in english in russian it sounds like is daily 53 in english product 53 it's a new version of lancet and the main like um, benefit of this new version of lancet is that they can use swarm drone attack doctrine they can they need they ha can attack like with the swarm and just if one drone uh, ma managed to discover and to track uh, enemy weapon uh, then the signal will be spread between the units and uh, they will uh, calculate and they will find out the most um, like say logical solution which uh, drone to use to attack and so on and basically these drones they don't need to have any connections with the mainland the only thing they need they need to have connections between themselves inside of the swarm drone it's a very interesting automated system and uh, the russians have launched massive produ production of these drones as well so by the end of this year we're going to see completely different picture of of warfare in comparison even with today with the situation in uh, july of 2023 and the final updates about the black sea let's dis discuss them and so on uh, today the russian sources published the video of the last ship of the grain deal that left at this support and as soon as this ship leave the black sea we can say that uh, basically the grain deal will be ended and we are going to see the beginning of the new battle of the new front line and this is going to be the battle of the black sea i believe that it's going to be a very interesting battle when talking about the ukrainians they're going to use drones missiles and and that's it and the russians will use drones ships aircrafts everything they have we'll see we'll see who is going to get uh, who will going to uh, quit this battle as a winner now let's move to the ground and let's discuss the situation on the ground first we're going to start of course with um, with Bradley Square with the Rehov bridgehead and so on the Russians continue bombing and shooting the Ukrainian positions while they're regrouping more and more sources confirms are confirming that 128th brigade was completely removed from the front line and currently the sources are saying that the forces of 116th mechanized brigade are dying uh, on between the buildings and the streets uh, of Petihatki where a few days ago the forces of 128th brigade were dying so the Ukrainian brought through fr fresh forces which tried to attack the russian positions all those attacks from the ukrainian side were repelled the russians can they control this settlement for 100 percent they establish full drone control full visible control they can see track every single movement inside of the settlement and of course the russians if they see that ukrainians manage to enter this or that building they start bombing and shelling the settlement furthermore the russians do have possibilities to continue distance mining method and for example in this video we see how one of the ukrainian light vehicle got on mine and was destroyed on that minefield furthermore the russians uh, because of overpopulated of forces from the ukraine and from the russian side now the russians have some kind of superiority in artillery and they started uh, controlling and uh, tracking not just the area in lapkova petihatki but in the vicinity of every single settlement around this area and for example this video we see how the ukrainians managed to establish their position and in the settlement that located on the northwest of Petihatkin, the Russians managed to discover and uh, they, they started bombing and shelling these uh, Ukrainian positions now we are moving to Bradley Square we haven't received uh, like big numbers or big pictures very interesting videos from this area probably after a few days of fierce fightings the Ukrainians are doing regrouping trying to dig in deeper inside of the minefields inside of these fields trying to bring more forces maybe to make some rotation and so on the Russians today published the video of a very heavy explosion inside of Arekhov uh, as I understand the Ukrainians are still using the railroad station the railroad ways for redeployment of the forces the, the russians managed to track and discover another let's say rotation process or another uh, portion of vehicles that arrived using the uh, railroad ways and after that the russians attacked and as a result of that attack we see that the ukrainians lost and probably another ammo depot or another accumulation of forces in that settlement and now we are moving to vimivka tactical bridgehead uh, there are a lot of talks a lot of rumors about the settlements a lot of updates 
the Ukrainians launched massive attack uh, yesterday. There was yesterday, the day before yesterday, the Ukrainians mainly were trying to attack Urajaina. But all those all those attacks were repelled. After that, the Ukrainians made few attempts to attack in the direction of Staromayorska. And as a result of one of those attacks, the Ukrainians using the light vehicles managed to enter the northern part of that settlement and to land the troopers. The troopers and forces started capturing the buildings on the northern part while the Russians were regrouping and uh, waiting for another wave of reinforcement. As soon as the Russians managed to bring some reinforcements, the Russians launched counter-offensive operation and the Russians, according to information from Russian sources, of course, managed to push the Ukrainians to step back towards the forest lines on the north. And, uh, for example, we start receiving a lot of videos from the Ukrainian side how they were trying to evacuate their soldiers during the Russian counter-attack, during the Russian artillery bombings of course they managed to evacuate a lot not just the soldiers but also armored vehicles and uh, let's say that at 1 p.m of the local time we got update that there were still clashes on the northern part and that there are still ukrainians and that but and by the way as i understand the russians still haven't managed to force the ukrainians to leave this territory so there are still clashes and we see anyway the battle of staromayorska has started and uh, it's a very important battle because uh, on that battle depends the destiny of Urajaina and many, many other settlements in the vicinity of this area. And the uh, Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of fierce fightings from South Donetsk area to uh, Petihatki, including Vremivka tactical bridgehead, the Ukrainians lost 260 soldiers, six armored vehicles and two artillery systems. Now we are moving to Donetsk area and we got very interesting update from FDF. As you can see, after a few days of very fierce fighting, the parties took a decision uh, to make a small operational pause before regrouping, before getting more forces, ammo and so on. But today we got a very interesting update from Krasnogorovka. The Ukrainians understand the value of this settlement, the value of this sector. They need to return control. Uh, they need to return control over this part of the front line, no matter the situation in Zaporozhye, if they want to continue holding FDF and um, for example today the ukrainians published a very interesting video of usage of cluster bombs in the vicinity of krasnogorovka these videos geolocated there are where ukrainian so russian soldiers among the fields probably in trenches and after that the ukrainians managed to discover them and basically in this video you will see the first evidence of usage of cluster bombs in krasnogorovka uh, there is no updates about the results of that attack but the ukrainians started using cluster shells massively and by the way the russians haven't started doing this yet at least we haven't received like a lot of like obvious video confirmations that confirm this piece of information for 100 percent but i believe that we will see anyway we'll see because this is a very uh, terrible weapon uh, I believe that the Russians, first of all, will collect as much as possible evidence about that. They will try to make some kind of meeting in the uh, Security Council of European Union National Organization. They will blame the United States of America. Maybe they will make some kind of uh, probably um, warranties and try to make some big uh, event. But uh, as soon as everybody support the uh, United States of America, the Russians will get their own their own like approval to start doing the same thing. So I believe this is going to be the legal steps of uh, starting in the beginning usage, usage of cluster bombs on the territory reclaimed by the Russian forces. Now we're moving to uh, to um, Klishevka, to South Artemovsk area. There are fierce fightings for that settlement and the Ukrainians, for example, continue bombing and shelling this small village. And today they published the video how they destroyed another Russian armored vehicles that were standing uh, in the central streets be between the buildings. Very difficult to understand what this armored vehicle was doing there anyway and also the ukrainians published the video of uh, their attempts to storm russian trenches on the western part there were ukrainian soldiers armored vehicles that uh, it's it's probably not a very fresh video but just another episode how everything began few weeks ago the ukrainians were clearing the trenches trying to storm and clear russian positions digging deeper before the next waves of attacks the russians reported and some russian mappers shows for now 
every single mapper shows his own vision and his own picture of Klishevka. Some mapper shows that, uh, as I show, that the entire bridgehead is under Russian control. Some people, some mapper shows that the Western trenches is al are already under Ukrainian control. Some mapper shows that Russians control just the village and the forest, and some mapper shows just the west northern part of the west uh, of the forest is under Ukrainian control. For now. I believe that this entire territory is covered with the fog of war and we need to wait a little bit more. The only thing that we know for sure that the Russians still hold Klishevka. And this is one of the most important because everybody is correct, everybody is right, because maybe during the day these or that trenches change their owners uh, maybe a few times. So for now I suggest to keep everything as is and just based on real geolocations and the real video from Klishevka we will change the map and show that yes the Ukrainians managed to capture this settlement. Uh, the Russians tried to counter attack on the northern flank, they tried to attack Ivanovska and the, the residential area in the vicinity of the settlement. Basically on this video we see how the Ukrainian soldiers were moving along the, uh, the uh, residential area, infantry was heading it close as close as possible to settlement, the Russians managed to discover them, to send their armored personal carrier or vehicle, and after that the vehicle start attacking the Ukrainian positions, and as a result of that operation the Ukrainians lost almost the entire platoon and squad of the forces, and those who survived managed to survive step back from this position. And the Russians control every single meter in this area. Furthermore, the Russians continue publishing the videos of bombing and shelling Ivanovska itself, because uh, the Ukrainians still use this settlement as the the main logistic hub for the forces of 5th Assault Brigade, 3rd Assault Brigade, 18th Assault Brigade that are currently storming uh, Klishevka. And the Russians are trying to work and trying to attack the Ukrainian logistic area with all type of weapon they have with on purpose to destroy ammo depots because currently ammo depots is, are the most important part and of course the accumulation of Ukrainian forces. The Ukrainians tried to counterattack the Russians on the northern flank and the vicinity of Berkhovka. And today, the uh, Ukrainian sources published the video how they were bombing the forces of 30th Mechanized Brigade were bombing the Russian positions along the forest. We, we are using this video just uh, to show the geolocation and to confirm the position of the front line on this flank of Artemovsk. Um, so now we are moving to Sivir's bridgehead. Uh, there are no changes on the ground. The Ukrainians tried to attack from Razdolovka with the forces of newly redeployed 115th mechanized and the support of 30th mechanized and 10 mountain assault brigade. And today there was another video how the Ukrainians using drones were trying to hunt and destroy Russian forces in the, in the area between Yakovlevka and Belagorovka. This is the Russian airmet vehicle that was bombed and attacked by the Ukrainian drone and as a result of that attack that armored vehicle was damaged. As you can see the Ukrainians needed few attempts before they were able to deal some damage to that armored vehicle. The Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of fierce fighting on the Donetsk front line, the Ukrainians lost 270 soldiers and 7 armored vehicles. When talking about Liman front line, we see that there is some kind of operational pause. Uh, we got very interesting videos how the Ukrainians were bombing and attacking the Russian armored vehicles uh, somewhere in the back positions in, on the east from Tarskoya. The armored vehicle was also damaged uh, but not destroyed uh, and after that the Ukrainians covered this territory with the artillery strike and was trying to destroy more vehicles and tanks on this bridgehead. The Minister of Defense reported that as a result of Ukrainian counterattacks and fierce fightings, uh, as a result of uh, Russian repelling of every single attack, the Ukrainians lost 100 soldiers, 5 armored vehicles and 2 artillery systems. As you can see, the level of losses is very heavy, more than 100 soldiers. So uh, we see that this situation in this area also coming to climax and soon the entire situation will be resolved and as a result of this battle we will see who will be able to develop further. The Russians to the north in direction of Tierney to the south in direction of Seversky Donetsk or the Ukrainians will be able to launch counter-attack and to push the Russians back from Tarsko in direction of Dubrova. Everything will be resolved very soon. And now we're getting to the Kupin's front line one more time. The Russians reported that they started offensive operation in this area. They're attacking somewhere in the vicinity of Sinkovka, uh, in the vicinity of Liman Pierve. For now it's very difficult to geolocate but as we discussed probably this is the part of uh, upcoming greatest Russian operation in the north of uh, in the northeast and the north part of uh, Ukraine 
uh, and uh, the newly created army is going to be the main actor and the main uh, thing in upcoming operation according to my understanding of this situation. And that's it for today. Military Summary channel reminds you to condemn any violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes to my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.